Lifting up Jesus, opening his word from Australia, Denmark, Israel, Japan, New Zealand, Northern Ireland, Republic of Ireland, Singapore, South Africa, United Kingdom, Thailand, the Philippines, United States, and throughout the world. You're watching Morial TV. Well, dealing with false conversions, the most essential passage of Scripture tells us you will know them by their fruits. If you do not see the fruit of the Spirit in a person's life at all, not that we're not all deficient in the fruit of the Spirit, but if you do not see a radical change in the person's life and lifestyle, certainly in the areas of morality, but also in the areas of the fruit of the Spirit in their life, in some way, to some degree, that will be visible. That is a sign of a false conversion. Secondly, when you see people who make the commitment on the basis of cheap grace to just put their hand up at a meeting or something without fully understanding the commitment, this goes back to the parable of the sower and the seed. When the bird, that is the demons, will just take what's sown because it had no depth, it was not properly understood, or something else that happens, the thorns choke the new growth. The cares of the world almost implode upon the new believer. Those are the usual things that happen. Remember, my people perish for a lack of knowledge. The most important things for a new believer is make sure, first of all, they really understand regeneration and substitutionary atonement. And be careful of people who are denying substitutionary atonement, that Jesus died for sin, such as that false teacher, William B. Young, who, who, who authored the shack. If people deny substitutionary atonement, that is a formula for false conversion. The shack is a formula for false conversion. Another formula for false conversion is the purpose-driven lie by Rick Warren. Rick Warren tells people in his purpose-driven lie that uh, if you see a person living immorally or involved in substance abuse, don't tell them they need to repent. That's a negative message. We have to be positive. Just tell them they need Jesus in their life, and then he'll clean them up. Well, if somebody doesn't repent, Jesus isn't coming into their life. The apostles plainly said, repent, the kingdom of God is at hand. John the Baptist, repent. The Hebrew prophets, repent. Jesus, repent and believe. If there's no repentance, it is for sure there's going to be a false conversion. Uh, when you see people who, again, profess to have been born again, but will not follow the teachings of Jesus and the New Testament, when they don't want to get baptized, or when they don't want to come to fellowship, or they don't want to witness and share their faith, those things are very often, in fact, usually indications also of a false conversion. What can you do about it? Make sure somebody understands the commitment. Don't go for numbers. Don't go for numbers baptized or how many people are coming to church. Remember, converts fall away. Only disciples remain. When you say people, particularly the televangelists, we had thousands saved, hallelujah. Where are they now? Jesus never said to make converts. He said to make disciples. Always remember, evangelism minus discipleship equals zero. There must be discipleship. At some point, it has to kick in, and usually, the sooner, the better. The first step of biblical discipleship was believer's baptism and getting that person into fellowship with other believers, because Satan is going to surround them with unsaved people who are going to try to drag them away from Christ. Understand this. Now that is, of course, if somebody was really saved. But a false conversion will always happen when somebody does not understand the nature and depth of the commitment. Again, Rick Warren, just put your hand up or just ask Jesus into your life. These things are, again, absolute invitations to false conversion. They're not invitations to receive Christ. They're invitations 
the false conversion. Remember also that Jesus told the religious leaders of his day that they go to the ends of the earth to make one proselyte, one convert, and he becomes twice as much a son of hell as he used to be. When somebody is saved and they go into a bad church, that bad church is going to corrupt them. They need to be fed the finest of wheat. They need to be fed the pure milk of the word as new believers also. These are essential things. Um, Billy Graham admits that only a percentage of the people who come forth at his crusades have really been truly committed and continued following him. He reckons it's less than 10%. To the best of my understanding. Now, of course, given the size of his crusades, that would still be a lot of people over the years. But of all those people who come forward, if you come back 10 years later, fewer than 10% are still walking with Jesus and have a radical change in their life. This is not good. People must understand the seriousness of the commitment of what Jesus did for them and what the cost is. Getting born again is the biggest decision of someone's life. It's a bigger decision than life or death surgery. It's a bigger decision than marriage. It's a bigger decision than anything. They must understand what they are doing. And they must understand that Christ made a commitment for them on the cross. He expects a commitment from them to pick up their cross and follow him. And Jacob, it, that brings it, up another so concern, another concern. Uh, about, uh -huh. young, I'm not yeah. saying a young child couldn't be saved, but it, it's very concerning that a young child who, who may like Jesus or see him as a hero really has the, uh, the knowledge to understand what's, what's happening. You know, the gospel is actually intellectually very simple. There are children who are at a young age, perhaps six or something like that, can really understand that Jesus died in their place for their sin and that he rose from the dead to give them eternal life. And he wants them to trust him and follow him and he's going to put his spirit in them to empower them to do it. There are children who are young, six and things like this, who can understand that commitment as long as it's properly explained to them. Now, something happens very often with children of believers. People like myself, possibly yourself, had a crisis point conversion. You reach a point in your life where you make that commitment, you accept Christ. Okay? When you grow up believing in a family of believers where your parents are Christians, and they take you to church and to Sunday school, and they tell you bedtime stories from the Bible, Sometimes those children come to know Jesus on their own without having a crisis point or saying the sinner's prayer. They're just saying their bedtime prayers or something. Thank you, Jesus, that you died for me. God bless mommy and daddy. They can come to a realization of who he is by the Holy Spirit. There may not be a specific point or date that you can put your finger on in the case where you have the children of believers. Or particularly. But what you can put your finger on is the date of their baptism. Remember, Scripture does not separate regeneration from baptism. What do you do with a corpse? You bury it and resurrect it again. Uh, be careful of churches, evangelists, and ministries who downplay the importance of believers' baptism and who separate baptism from salvation. On the other hand, be co-equally careful of sacramentalism, not just the Roman Catholic version, which teaches baptismal regeneration and ex opere operato power of the ritual itself to save a baby based on the faith of its parents and godparents. This is ridiculous. But uh, the Protestant version, the Campbellites, the Church of Christ, um, who say it's not enough to pray to be born again, you also have to be baptized by immersion in water to be saved. And some of them even say, you must be baptized in water in their church, which is known as the sin of party spirit. Be very careful of that. The good thief did not have an opportunity, as we call him the good thief, did not have an opportunity to get baptized, but Jesus told him, this day you'll be with me in paradise. However, 
if somebody does have the opportunity to be baptized and doesn't do it, that raises the question, were they truly saved? Hi Saints, i um, off today, so I'm pretty much busy cleaning up, but um, after I clean up I'm going to do what I usually do, drop off some more goods to the Salvation Army right down the street from my house, and then I'm probably going to uh, go on a walk. I like going on walks because I live out in the country, and I like to look at the scenery, because you know God's creation is beautiful, you know brings about, besides Jesus, it brings about a very calm peace, especially when your trials are intensifying like mine are, but we all have trials and struggles and that's why we have to trust Jesus to deliver us in his uh, appointed time. We have to wait on the Lord. Um, I wanted to talk to you guys about uh, this dream that I had. Now I'm trying to make sense of this dream, but I think I might have made sense of it because I asked God questions about it and I prayed about it and stuff like that and I think I got my answer. But um, I had this dream that Excuse me. I was in a line, not not in a line, but I was observing, and I was watching. I was watching, and there were two sinks. It was one on the left and one on the right. Now, the one on the left, there was a lot more people, and the one on the right, there was not many, not very many. So the one on the left, there was something coming out of the faucets and I was watching them. They each went up to the sink and they started to wash their hands and what was coming out of the sink was blood and the blood was on their hands. And then on the right side, they were washing their hands but what was coming out of the faucet was clean water. So um, I kind of got an idea as to what the scripture meant. but. I wanted to dig a little bit deeper. So, make a long story short, I believe the blood on the hands, which you probably get, you're probably speculating if you read the scriptures a lot. When God warns about being a watchman, that if you don't, um, if you don't warn when God tells you to, the blood of those souls is on your hands. Also means um, those that are sinning, you know, we're all sinners, we all fall short of the glory of God, but I mean those that are refusing to repent, and they keep sinning and piling sin upon sin, and then spreading their sin to others, whether it's lies or encouraging other people to sin in general, regardless of what the sin is, the blood of the souls that they're deceiving in that manner, causing to sin, you know, basically, um, when I say causing to sin, people make a choice to sin, but tempting others to sin, and then those people give in to sin, the blood of those souls is on those individuals' hands. You know, demons can tempt spiritually humans to sin, and they can also use other humans to do the same thing, you know, to tempt other people to sin. And it also means bearing evil fruit as well. And on the right side, it obviously means individuals that are living a righteous life, bearing e of good fruit, excellent fruit, clean hands, you know, their hands are clean of any souls. They don't have the blood of innocent souls on their hands. They're living righteous, they're pleasing God, uh, living a sin-free life, and it is possible because the righteous prophets of old did so. It's possible to be righteous. We're only made righteous by God, amen. And um, 
also, uh, like I said, bearing good fruit and being a watchman when God tells you to warn, you warn. And according to the scriptures, if you warn about a false prophet or about any sin, it's not just about being warning about false prophets. You have to warn the body of Christ if they're in error when God tells you to. And when you do that, your soul is delivered. The blood of those souls is not on your hands. It also means that. And in the other part of scripture that says, many are called, few are chosen. So that's what more people on the left side with their hands full of blood means. That, you know, many are called, but few are chosen. So many start on the narrow path, but then end up on a wide path to destruction. That's what the left side of the dream meant. The right side meant the few that were chosen, that made it. Came righteous, live righteous for God. Um, the left side represents Satan, the right side represents God. I also got that out of the dream as well. Now, you might say, why did I have that dream? Well, I believe that's a way of the Lord warning all of us that um, there's a lot of false prophets floating around, whether it's on YouTube or away from YouTube. There's a lot of false doctrines. There's just a lot of deception, strange fire. And the Lord is saying to be careful for one. For two, he's basically saying many are called for your chosen. Many, many started on the right path and then they fall off because they find it hard to uh, tear themselves away from the world. And they find it hard to resist sin. It's not hard to resist sin. You know, it's a matter of giving it all to Jesus Christ. The devil is always going to try to tempt you. We are stronger in the spirit and weak in the flesh. Amen. So, um, ask God, I said, okay, you know, before I even release this dream to you, I asked God if this was a sign from him or if, you know, give me a sign if it was from him. Uh, I want to say Ezekiel chapter 33 or 18, the part that says about being a watchman on the wall, I think it's 1822. I think it's in the book of, uh, it's a book of Ezekiel that talks about being a watchman. That was playing. And then the book of Deuteronomy um, played on my other audio Bible that I have downstairs, which talks about if those prophesy something and it doesn't come to pass, that is a prophet God never sent, meaning a false prophet. Um, also, I got another sign. You guys sent me an email several emails in fact about some woman that goes by the channel name of cat c-a-t-c and before i even spoke to you guys like i'm gonna speak to you now about her real briefly i didn't even look at you can look at her videos yourself just make sure you wear the full armor of god on okay and cover yourself with the blood of the lamb and i'll explain why in a minute but um i messaged her privately a couple of times because I wanted to know why does she believe that if she uses her birthday something else I, I didn't even get it you know what I mean she was using her birthday and I believe she was also using she was using numerology and it had to do with her birthday to try to pinpoint when Jesus is coming she claims Jesus is coming I think it's between September 1st and the 4th and September 1st is coming upon us so I asked her you know why or how does she come about that if the scripture says no man knows the day nor the hour and other scripture says that God is um, not humans human beings um, of course not even the angels, not even Jesus Christ himself, know the day, nor the hour. Only the Father knows when he's going to send his son Jesus to get the elect. And also, I believe it's in the book of Acts, chapter 1, verse 7. I could be wrong, it could be the second chapter, but it's in the book of Acts, where it talks about, no man knows the season of things of which God has under his control. And, um... that Jesus is going to be coming unexpectedly. If you read the parable in the scriptures about the thief and the owner, Jesus goes on to explain that uh, the strongmen of that house, if they knew when the thief was coming, they'd be waiting for the thief. 
Okay? So the thief is never going to let... He's never going to reveal to the uh, strongman of the house, the owner of the house, when he's going to come. He's going to come unexpectedly. So that's why Jesus uses that point. He's going to come like a thief in the night, unexpectedly. It means no one is going to know. So I asked her, how does she come about this logic about using her birthday and something else? She uses numerology, which... Um, see, I realized Jesus' number is 777. Okay, I realized that. All right. The enemy likes to pervert everything God does. Is numerology used in the occult? Yes. So I believe that this woman was using numerology, occultic numerology, and she was using... I can't even get past, you know, this, this woman's mind frame is different, but she was using numerology and she was using... Um, astrology, you want to say? I want to say astrology. She was using that. People might say, oh, no, she wasn't. No, she wasn't. Well, she's using her birthday. You know, that's like saying that she's using the horoscope. She's go she's using that, you know. Horoscopes and the zodiac, that's part of astrology. I'm not going to get into it, but it's part of astrology. When I was in the world, I dabbled in astrology a little bit. And I haven't, and that was when I was a kid. I was 16. 16 years old, you know, and she's trying to figure out when the Lord's coming by using numbers, and that's part of astrology, too. You know, when they try to, you know, that, that when they try to figure out when the Lord's coming, and some of these people posing as Christians like to use numerology to, to uh, determine what type of personalities they have, or they like to use astrology to do the same thing, and to also, um, they like to use that to determine when the Lord's going to come. And the Lord warns against using astrology and enchantments in the Bible. That, that's like witchcraft. He warns against that. Um, this woman has a witchcraft spirit. Let me, let me continue. Um, and they try to use, you know, you know, um, the signs, the 12 signs of the zodiac. A horoscope, you want to call it that the zodiac signs, they try to use that. They try to use that to determine when Jesus is coming. They try to, um, I don't know how to explain this to you guys. They try to use that, those 12 signs, you know, and they try to use the signs to predict things, you know, saying weird stuff if Saturn's near here or there, you know, astrology. And you know what also got me thinking? Of the, zo of the horoscope, there's 12 signs. 12 signs. You know, and I'm not getting into, I'm not getting into numerology, but each sign symbolizes a false god. Okay? Demons, basically. Okay? Um, you know the Gregorian calendar is pagan. You know that off the bat is pagan. If you don't, look it up, because it is. And, you know, the devil's number is six. Six and six. I'm not trying to get into numerology, guys. It's not my thing. Like I said, God's number is 777. That Satan's number is 666. Okay. Um, I believe the enemy counterfeits everything God does. And I also believe that, the en you know, um, I say occultic numerology because the, en the enemy counterfeits, you know, numbers. I'm just saying that right out, okay? Because if the Bible, I'm not trying to, I'm not, look, I don't even do numerology, okay? I don't know anything about that. I just believe that the, that the Bible mentions something about numbers. Not, it doesn't use numbers to determine the signs of the times. Jesus Christ knows that. The only thing the Bible mentions about numbers is God's number being 777, okay? And that thing, Satan's number being 666. That's about it. I'm not into numerology. I don't even mess with that. But all I know, what I learn, is that the enemy counterfeits everything God does. And I'm not going to say it as fact, but I believe that the enemy will pervert numbers for its occultic use. You know, occultic numerology, like this woman is doing. She's using numerology, occultic numerology, to try to determine when Jesus is coming. She says something that she was given a weird... She says something about using her birthday to determine when Jesus is coming. And that's not even biblical. Her name is Cat C. C-A-T-C. 
And before I talk to you guys about this woman, I went to her privately twice and of course she didn't respond like most false prophets don't. And I did ask her what will happen, you know, what will, you know, what will happen, you know, how would you feel when September 1st, 2nd, 3rd and 4th comes and goes and there's no rapture? How would you feel about that? It's going to make you a false prophet. Are you going to go on air and repent? Are you going to do a repentance video humbling yourself, apologizing for all those people you deceived because people are following this. They're following what she's saying. They're believing every word spilling out of her mouth. They're not opening up their Bibles. Okay? And she didn't respond. Okay? And the emails I got about her, I believe, was a sign from the Lord. Not only that, yes, the stream I sent you about, for, about many people having blood on their hands of the souls that they caused to deceive. Because false prophets have the blood of, the, have a lot of blood on their hands from souls that they caused to fall off the path. So I believe the Lord was saying that that email plus the two scriptures in my audio Bible was a definite sign that this stream was from him. The bloody hands was not only from watchmen not warning, but it's also from sinners causing other people to sin, meaning false, and, and also including false prophets causing other people to fall off the path. But um, this woman is, she's got over 900 souls following her. Now, I don't, not about subscriber numbers, you know what I'm saying? I'm not about how many views I get or how much this, that means nothing. The subscribers, the people, the souls mean something. They mean everything, you know? But the numbers mean nothing. You know, even one soul matters. So even if she had just one soul on her channel, that matters very much because that one soul could take that doctrine that she's teaching, that false doctrine, and spread it around to millions and millions of people making unrighteous trees, producing evil fruits. And then those people can spread those doctrines out as well. So, if you are following this lady, I believe she believes she's doing God a service. Um, she believes she's sincere. And I believe that what's sad about the whole situation is that, um, she doesn't see what she's doing is wrong. You know? And people like that, yeah, you expose them like I'm doing now. I'm letting you know what she's doing, yes, is wrong. Because I went to her twice in private and she did not respond. So I got to warn you guys. I was commanded by Jesus to warn you. Because I don't want the blood of your soul in my hands. You know, but she really thinks she's doing a service by rapture date setting. She's date setting the rapture to be between. This is what I got from the three videos she did. She literally did three videos on this very topic. Um, she, she made the rapture. She says 100% without doubt that the rapture is going to be September 1st to September 4th of 2016. We don't know the day or the hour. Not the angels, not even Jesus, only the Father himself. See, when I tell you guys that Jesus is coming, I'm not telling you guys tomorrow or next year. It could be 50 years from now. I don't know when. I like to tell you Jesus is coming to keep you encouraged because Jesus says to comfort each other with these words. That's one of his greatest promises that he's coming and the Lord is not slacking when it's coming to his promises. He doesn't delay. He keeps his promises. But you will have Satan out there perverting those promises. You know, telling you people, the Lord's coming on such and such date. Miss Cat C, if you are watching, you are not doing God a service or a favor. Because you're not failing to realize that God has sent people to warn you whether they're believers or not, because even an atheist exposed you. An atheist. Okay? So, you have to realize what you're not doing, I mean, what you're doing is not of God. 
What about those people that are getting, that, are, that believe you, that follow you, and that are looking forward to the rapture to be September 1st? I think you said the dates were September 1st to the 4th of 2016. And when those days come and the rapture does not happen, how do you think those people are going to feel? They're going to feel disappointed, discouraged. Some of them will leave the faith. The Bible warns about this. I've known cases where people have actually became suicidal and have actually took their own lives because they were upset. They were disappointed in Jesus when Jesus did nothing wrong and they couldn't wait for the Father. Like that gentleman that falsely prophesied the rapture back in 2011. This was all over the news, guys. Um, he prophesied the rapture being 2011, I think it was. And he said it was going to be 6-something in the evening. And so many people sold their house. They quit their jobs. They emptied out their bank accounts. They spent their life savings. And when the rapture came and went, these people had nothing. Nothing. And a lot of them committed suicide. Now, it's their choice that they commit suicide, but I'm going to say something. The one that falsely prophesied in the first place, God's going to hold them more accountable. Because God sets watchmen to be shepherds to their flock, to feed them the right way, the truthful way, per the word of God. Not to feed them and fill their belly up with counterfeit meats. He's going to hold those individuals accountable. So Miss Cat, see if you are watching, my question to you is this. If you are wrong, and I know you are wrong, because God's not going to tell anyone when he's coming, because what you're doing is purely satanic and unbiblical. You are under the influence of a spirit of occultic numerology and witchcraft, a Jezebel type spirit. If you're wrong, will you make a video publicly apologizing most importantly to Jesus Christ, repenting to him, and then to those you cause to fall off the path. Will you humble yourself? Take care, saints. Saints, um, this is Dustin Wright Prophecies channel. I touched upon him on the video I uploaded yesterday. Now, before I continue, let me be clear about something. Jesus is not going to tell you people when he's coming. In other words, Jesus doesn't know the hour, neither does the man, neither does the angels. Okay? People like to take the scriptures, Amos chapter 3 verse 7, out of context by saying God's going to reveal everything to them. First of all, how do you know what God's going to reveal to you? You don't know that. Secondly, Jesus does what he pleases because it's in the Bible. He is Father God. Thirdly, he's only going to reveal what he feels fit that you need to know. Okay? Fourthly, this person right here has prophesied the rapture back in 2013 of December, and it never came to pass. If you go to the book of Deuteronomy, it clearly says, if you prophesy something and it doesn't come to pass, God never sent that person. That person's a false prophet. He has deleted the videos since then. So that way you guys don't know that he was exposed as a false prophet. So he's date setting again. Okay. Um, I did private message him quite a few times, even, even before I did yesterday's video that I uploaded for you, or I should say this morning, okay? I'm getting ready to go to work. I have to be at work at 4, so it is a little bit after 11 because I have to take care of some errands, but it was laid on my heart to talk about this individual here. Look at what he's saying now. The Lord's coming before the election. The rapture will happen before the election. Amos 3.7 says, Surely the Lord does nothing without revealing his plan to the servants, his prophets. That means the Lord does nothing. He doesn't make a move. And if he has an army, he doesn't tell his army not what he's doing. He's going to let his army know. So I'm letting you know I'm a soldier and I consider myself a prophet. Why? Because I study the Lord. I study the, I... He's a self-proclaimed prophet. He is a false prophet. His prophecies never came to pass. And I wasn't the only individual that corrected him on this, but he refuses correction, much like false prophets normally do. The 
Bible. And Acts 2.17 says, in the last days, the Lord is going to pour his spirit out and the sons and daughters will prophesy. So I am just one of the sons and daughters who prophesy. I am fulfilling Acts 2.17. He says, I am. I am. Me, 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 me. Assuming he's a prophet because there's a major spirit of pride, a Jezebel type spirit at play here and false prophecy as well. Okay. Jesus will pour out his spirit. But if you go to 1 John, Jesus says to try and test every spirit if they are of him or not. Notice he's not telling you to do that in this video. Okay. Jesus says to test the spirits because false Christ and false prophets will arise. Okay. Now he's sure there's not going to be an election. Now I'm going to make something very clear. I said in my last video, I guarantee you, Jesus is not coming before the election. Why did I say that? Because a lot of people are date setting and saying Jesus is coming before the election. Now they're looking for him. And if you go to the scriptures that talks about the parable with the thief and the house owner, the thief is never going to tell the owner when he's coming because the thief, oh, the owner of the house is going to be waiting. So the thief is going to come unexpectedly. Okay? He's not going to come and announce his arrival to the owner. The owner will be ready and waiting. That's why Jesus says that he's going to come like a thief in the night. He's not going to tell anybody. These people clearly ignore the scriptures that says no man knows the day nor the hour, not even the angels or Jesus Christ himself. And the other one, Acts chapter 1 verse 7, that clearly says that um, we do not have control over the seasons and times that only Jesus, who is the Father God, has control over. Watch. And I am telling you, there will not be an election and the sovereign Lord is coming. And he's telling you, I'm telling you there's not going to be an election. He doesn't know that. So you, some of you guys came on my channel saying, uh, well, you don't know there's not going to be an election. But if you clearly heard my message from this morning, I said, I guarantee you Jesus is not coming. And then I said, for all we know, Jesus can decide to come. But that's up to him. But Jesus is not going to come when you people are expecting him and looking, you know, looking for him. In other words, he's not going to come when you expect him. He's going to come when you least expect it. He's not going to come in the next couple months. There's so many souls that don't know Christ, that still need to be taught about the Lord, that still need Christ. Jesus said in Matthew 24, when the gospel has been preached to all corners of the world, then shall the end come. Then you will know that the end is here. Then he also says that... Um, they say, when is the, the disciples ask them, when is the end going to be? And God gave them signs about pestilences, famines, about war, rumors of war, earthquakes in diverse places. He called at the beginning of sorrows. Then he said that when you see the abomination of desolation standing at the holy place, okay, that you will know that your redemption draweth not. And then I had some person made a strange comment to me saying, Jesus is coming, so it's in the Bible, he's coming after the tribulation. So what are you saying? That we're in a tribulation now. We're not in a tribulation. The Daniel 9.27 prophecy hasn't even happened yet. That's going to usher in the seven year tribulation. When G Jesus coming back after the tribulation, that's when he pours out his wrath. The bride's not appointed for wrath. So the bride's not going to be here by then. Again, I don't know when the tribulation is, but I know that. I mean, I don't know when the rapture is, but I know that the Bible says that Jesus is going to pour out his wrath after the tribulation. The bride is not appointed for wrath. Which means the bride will not be here when God's pouring out his wrath. That's what I know. That's what it says in the Bible. Some people say the rapture and the bride of Christ, and the, and the ra the, they say um, Jesus coming back after the tribulation and the rapture are the same thing. I don't believe they are. My opinion is that the rapture and the wrath are two different things. And this is my reasoning behind this and I'm explaining it to you. It is because of the fact that the bride is not appointed for wrath. It says it in the book of Thessalonians, it's all over scripture. The wrath of God is for those that are wicked that have defied God. So the wrath is going to be poured. It says immediately after the tribulation, the sun's going to grow dark. I'm, I'm sorry, the sun will go dark, the moon will not give her light, the stars of, um, the stars in heaven will not shine. I'm paraphrasing, that's what it says, 
and then you'll see the great and terrible day of the Lord. In other words, God is immediately after the tribe, immediately after the tribulation. I'm going to try to pull up that scripture for you real quick. You know, people were coming on my channel actually defending this guy. This guy's a false prophet. You, you, if you're defending him and and not listening to people that are warning you, this is not just me. You have no discernment. You're ignoring the Bible. Ignoring the Bible. Look at what it says here. Immediately after the tribulation, if you see that in Matthew 24 verses 29 to 30, of those days shall the sun be darkened. And the moon shall rise, I'm sorry, shall not give her light. And the stars shall fall from heaven, and the powers of heaven shall be shaken. And then shall appear the sign of the Son of Man in heaven. And then shall all the tribes of the earth mourn, and they shall see the Son of Man coming in the powers of heaven and power and great glory. Now, immediately after the tribulation, people say, oh, that, that's pertaining to the rapture. I'm going to show you something about the wrath. I'm just going to show you something about the wrath real quick before I get back to the topic at hand because a lot of people you know they got angry at me because they don't they don't want to adhere to sound, to sound doctrine because it says in the word of God this guy is not telling you to test the spirits I always tell you to test my spirits okay I always tell you to test my spirits always I'm not going to tell you not to. You've got to test the fruits. You don't test the fruits. How do you know a person's telling the truth or not? How do you know you're being taught correctly? But I'll tell you one thing. These date setters are not teaching you correctly. You're not being taught correctly. You're being told about, you know, they know when the rapture's coming. God says it in the word. No man knows the day or the hour. Not the Jesus, not the earth. I mean, no man knows the day or the hour, not the angels, not even the son, Jesus, okay? Only the father knows. See, the scriptures in Revelation chapter 29 or 20 is talking about the rapture. Even 19, and I saw heaven open and behold a white horse and he that sat upon him and called faithful and true and his righteousness, he doth judge and make war. That's the pouring of God's wrath. God's going to pour his wrath out. I'm going to put the scripture below immediately after the tribulation. Okay? But you got these date setters like Cat C or Cat T. Another false prophet that uses birth dates to date set. And she uses some other weird math formula. She's saying the Lord's going to come between September 1st and September 4th. Well, guess what? Today's the first. Jesus hasn't come. Tomorrow's the second. Then the third. Then the fourth. Okay? This person is saying, this Dustin Wright prophecy, that Jesus is coming for November 8, 2016. Jesus is not going to come before November 8, 2016. He prophesied to you all, this guy here, many, 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 many times falsely. And he deleted the videos. And every one of his prophecies failed. So before you people start defending him, you need to do your research. You need to get into your Bible. You need to look yourself. This is an image of him, so I can show you. That's his image. And then he swears up and down there's not going to be an election. Well, how do you know that? I gave you guys my speculation that I believe the elections will either be suspended if Obama stays in office. And it's not for, he says in this video, this guy, that if you declare war, you know how many times we declared war on countries and the president never extended their term? I think the only one that extended their term, I think it was in the second war or something like that. A president served actually three terms, I believe it was, because of going into World War. Yeah, we're World War Three. if it's not escalated yet, okay? But we need a major crisis to happen. That has not happened yet. You, you know, I'm not saying that Obama's not going to try to stay in office. You don't know. He might try to, he's, he's trying now. To stay in office he's trying but if he doesn't stay in office okay another leader worse than him is gonna step up and that's either Trump or Hillary either one but this is the image of this guy here he's a false prophet 
He's a false prophet. He's completely neglecting scripture. He calls himself a prophet. He's a self-proclaimed prophet. He's a prophet of Satan. He's not a prophet of Jesus Christ. I personally corrected him about the rapture not being in 2013, and I was correct about that. And he didn't even bother making a video repenting to the people he caused to fall off the path. Now he's saying Jesus is coming November 8th, before November 8, 2016. Mark your calendars, ladies and gentlemen. November 8, 2016 is the day the elections take place. He's prophesying that. Mark each day off your calendar and you will see by almighty God, okay, that he, Jesus is not coming before the elections. If he comes only because he decides to, but he's not gonna come when you are expecting him. And he's expecting the Lord Anytime between now and November 8, 2016. Guess what? Jesus is not going to make his glorified appearance for a false prophet. If this person is saying Jesus told them this and that and the other, he's equating himself and exalting himself like Jesus, higher than the angels. And Satan did that. Satan always wants to be like the most high. And look what that got him. I got him cast out of heaven. I'm defending the Lord. And if you people are taking offense to sound doctrine, you need to go to Christ. That's disturbing. That is quite disturbing. This guy is a false prophet. Nobody knows when Christ is coming or when the rapture is going to happen. God's not going to tell anybody that. He's only going to tell you things he feels you need to know. That's it. He's not going to tell you everything or he's not going to make some move like this guy says without you. He's not going to do that. People take that out of, uh, they take that scripture, Amos 3, chapter 7, out of, out of context. It's like they're giving themselves an excuse, a scapegoat to falsely prophesy. Or the other one, when you try to correct the false prophet, they say, touch not my anointed. So that way they could try to keep the watchman up. Another scapegoat so they could falsely prophesy. These people like this are anointed by Satan. All we can do is pray for them that they repent. This is a false prophet exposed. You guys need to test the spirits, please, for your own salvation. I'm going to give you three quick verses here, and then we'll get started. We're in the book of Titus, chapter 1, verse 9. Holding fast the faithful word as he hath been taught, that he may be able by sound doctrine both to exhort and to convince the gainsayers. In the same book, Titus, we're in chapter 2, verse 1. But speak thou the things which become sound doctrine. So now we move to 1 Timothy chapter 6, starting at verse 3. If any man teach otherwise, and consent not to wholesome words, even the words of our Lord Jesus Christ, and to the doctrine which is according to godliness, then he is proud, knowing nothing, but doting about questions and strifes of words, whereof cometh envy, strife, railings, evil surmisings, perverse disputings of men of corrupt minds, and destitute of the truth. Brende, let's get started. So I hope this can become a teachable point. This, of course, is Cat T. One of the worst people I've seen on YouTube because she teaches a doctrine that is unscriptural. And of course, she is the one who is claiming that the rapture is going to be tomorrow and or uh, the next day. And listen to what she says here. The first thing he wants me to tell you is the reason you're deceived is because you do not know. Not only do you not know your father, you think you do, but you don't. And you don't know your scriptures. See, I find that extremely, extremely amusing because everything that she's basing her rapture date uh, uh, is completely against scripture. She's one of the most arrogant, um, as far as I'm concerned, unteachable. And she's, uh, she's going to find out in the next couple of days here. Because I'll tell you what, guys, you might think that I'm being mean, but I'm not. I'm trying to head off this absolute damage that this woman is doing okay and that's it 
the rapture is not going to happen. And I'll tell you what is going to happen. There's going to be many Christians who are going to get mad at God because of what this thing says. And that's it. And she's a thing by choice. I'm not saying that to try to be mean. She's abandoned the holy doctrine of Jesus Christ, the very words that we are told to study to show thyself approved, and she's given heed to doctrines of devils. And when this rapture doesn't happen, people are going to get mad at God, and they're going to abandon their walk in Christianity. And this is typically what happens. So let's continue. And that's one of the things I'm about to try to go over with you. And I pray if this takes two videos. I'm going to try to get every bit of this out, give you as much as I can to clear up any last things, because I'm not allowed to answer you. And you're So now she's not allowed to answer, even though souls might have one last question. Before the doors of the ark close, according to this person who preaches a false doctrine, She's not allowed to answer. Can you imagine that? It's it's silly. It's silly and it's absolute folly. And he said to all people out there on YouTube. Here it comes. Anyone. What? Who goes against this. Uh-oh. Or. Or what? Continues to preach. What? What I'm about to tell you. Is death coming? Whoa. 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 Bill and Ted. Okay, so there is her version of calling down death. And this is, you know, this is just a silly way of yet another false teacher, a false prophet, calling down her version of death upon those who oppose her. Absolute folly. Period. I am to give you Matthew twenty four twenty four. Yes, that's two, 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 four twos. <laughs> <laughs> Witchcraft and numerology. That's so clever. Now again, we're going to see the, the absolute hysterical part of this, uh, because watch what she says here. For false Christs and false prophets will arise, and they will show great signs and wonders, so as to deceive and lead astray, if possible, even the elect. So what she just said here, it's amazing. It's like watching a false prophet call out a false prophet. In this particular case, what you're saying, what you're seeing is the false prophet call out herself. And she has no clue. Delusion. Delusion. <laughs> it just keeps circling her head. And you can just see the delusion. You can hear the delusion. Absolutely trapped within the pride of her own mindset. Unable to learn anything that is, would be defined as sound doctrine. She's calling out herself here. So my question then becomes, Cat, because I know you're watching, after, let's just say, the 4th of September comes, will you come on and make a repentance video condemning yourself, or at least repenting, that you, in fact, are this very false prophet that you were surprisingly quote, quoting scripture on? Will you repent on September 4th? My guess is no. I'm sure you'll probably come out and you'll say, something is wrong and I've got to recalculate. So now if you've doubted that Cat is arrogant and uh, filled with vanity, listen to what she says here. No, I did not want to come here. I do not get money. I certainly didn't come to make friends because I'm probably one of the most hated people on YouTube now <laughs> because I really screwed up Satan's plans. He spent 2,000 years screwing this up, okay? Did you hear that? She's taking credit for being the sole person for screwing up 2,000 years of Satan's plans. I mean, really think about what she said here. It's absolutely absurd. I mean, if you can't define this as one of the most arrogant, conceited, and vanity-filled persons who claims to represent Jesus Christ, I haven't seen I don't even think, well, yeah, I guess Claire with a still small voice has still got her topped. But, boy, i got to tell you, this, this one is running a close second. So we continue. But this voice 
is this of what I have spent most of my life listening to, not being told by Christians correctly. I actually had Christians telling me this voice was my woman's intuition. So she's talking about a voice here that she's heard all her life, which is kind of startling. And she had, in her testimony, she says Christians uh, told her what this voice was, um, but now she's you know, kind of, I would say she's mocking other Christians and frowning upon what they told her, and which I kind of think is a result of her going off, uh, going rogue like Sarah Palin, I guess. And she's completely going rogue from the Holy Scripture. She'll quote Scripture when it suits her to try to push this doctrine, which is unscriptural. But now we know that she's hearing voices, so let's continue. It was not. But, regardless, he was preparing me for this moment. This was what, my first job was nursing and learning to listen to him. This was my main purpose. I am, I am now doing my main purpose, whether you believe that or not. I don't believe it. I came here to save as many of you as I could. Oh, you're going to save and them. I came here because he called me woke me up and said, go to YouTube and begin <laughs> teaching. That must be it. And actually, probably... Let's take a look here. She's saying that the rapture is tomorrow or the next day. And God told her to go to YouTube. So God told her, you know, the spoiler of Satan's 2,000 years worth of plans, with a sub-base of 1,500 people. She's the number one prophet in the last 2,000 years with a sub-base of 1,500 people. Friends, this is delusion. This is absolute delusion. Unbelievable. So we continue, and it will get worse as you listen. And he started showing me all this stuff. I am a Capricorn. <laughs> oh. And I saw that, and he told me. So now we have uh, Capricorn coming into play. And, of course, we're talking about now the signs of the Zodiac. So, again, uh, I would clearly easily say that this is witchcraft coming into play here. And I saw that, and he told me, you will become his nightmare. <laughs> oh, you know, <laughs> do you... I I get so many comments saying uh, people are get so mad at me for mocking. I I can't see if if people would abide in the truth of Jesus Christ, there would be no need. But this is laughable. This woman has just proclaimed that God Himself told her that she would become Satan's nightmare. You guys, <laughs> okay. Here's my question: How can you not laugh? This is so ridiculous. All right, now we're going to listen to a clip and I'm going to explain something to you. And knowing in that video that the rapture was in September, but didn't understand why I knew that. I was, I, how could a human being, a nobody from nowhere, know this? So I know. So here's, here's what we need to learn about this. This is one of millions, millions uh, of delusional people who have lived since um, the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ, who have proclaimed something wild. And in her case, she's just another rapture person predicting the rapture. But she's questioning, how did I know this? Well, I'll tell you how. It's called familiar spirits. Demonic spirits are speaking to you, Kat and you refuse to recognize, and because you don't abide in sound doctrine, you can't recognize that you're being lied to. And this is exactly what it is, exactly. So now we wanna to listen to this next part, just so we can get a confirmation. I am telling you, 100%, without a shadow of a doubt, it is this year, it is Feast of Trumpets, by the lunar calendar, Anybody out there who t 
tells you it is not. It is in October. That is the Jewish calendar. This is the lunar calendar. This is God's calendar. This is the new moon. It's the sliver. It, in fact... Okay, so we got it officially documented that she's calling for it this weekend. So that's good. So we move on. Now you're going to experience the absolute novice of Cat T. This is kind of a loaded gun here. So um, watch what she says here. And this is going to reveal the absolute child uh, that she is and is nobody to be feared. So listen to what this lunatic says. Because I did the lunar calendar for Passover this year because that's what he told me to do. And I understood after we did it. Why? Because it occurred on the Jewish calendar. It occurred on Feast of Purim. All right. Did you hear the silly dingbat? Purim is not an official feast of God. Let me say that again. Purim is not an official feast of God. Let's explore that. So here we are. Let's take a look. The official feasts of God, Passover, Unleavened Bread, First Fruits, Pentecost, Trumpets, Atonement, Tabernacles. Again, this is why she's unscriptural, and this is why, oh, I'm trying to be nice here, people. I'm trying to be nice, but there are souls at stake. Um, um... But here you've got a woman who's a complete novice claiming that God confirmed this through the Feast of Purim, which is not one of the feasts of God. Now, you can certainly uh, learn about Purim in Esther. And here you go. You can read this if you want to pause it and read it. But this is not an appointed feast by God. Okay, so let's get that straight. In fact, there's no mention of that throughout Scripture at all. It's not even mentioned. In the New Testament. So let's just keep that in check. All right, so if you're still with me, let's listen to the next clip. That's what a Christian does. They get to their hands and knees and they say, Father, there is a woman on YouTube. I don't know whether to trust Crazy her. She woman. is saying this this year. If you have a tight relationship with Father, he will confirm it for you in heartbeat. In fact, you should have already confirmed it if you had a tight relationship with him. That's my point. Because a lot of these subs, if you will go and start reading, you're going to find out they've already had it confirmed. See, that's the scary part right there. She's pointing down to her subs. She's well aware that the subs are, uh, that she's teaching the subs, that she's influencing the lambs of Christ. And this is where the danger comes in again. Leaving a foul taste in those who are new, those who may be on the fence. And so she doesn't even realize the damage that she's doing. And, you know, I'm, I'm one of those cat who has a tight relationship with God for 35 years. I have not been perfect, but I don't feel, in fact, I feel disgust in my soul for the things that you're teaching. And again, the only time will tell here this weekend when your uh, millionth false prophecy falls flat and nothing happens. Again, I pose the question to you, will you come out and repent? Will you confess to being an absolute outright dingbat? By abandoning the sound doctrine of God Almighty, Jesus Christ, and teaching this filth to people. It's just another tragedy. Many of them already had dreams and didn't understand what the dreams meant until they saw this video and I put it together for them. Until I put it together for them. Scripture couldn't do it. It was cat. Cat T. Put it together for them. And that's the tragedy of having a bad teacher. Cameron Diaz should not have been cast in the role for that movie. It should have been you, Kat, because you are a bad teacher. Feast that have yet to be completed. The rapture what? is on Feast of Trumpets. How sure are you? 100. No, 1,000. 1,000% 1, sure. All right, just another confirmation. I want to hear. One thousand percent confirmed. The rapture is happening this weekend. You know, I should have asked you, Cat, last week, if you would be willing to sign over your house to me. You know, you're not going to need it anymore. I guarantee you that you would not have. You're a 
fake. So we'll listen to this and I'll give you a little uh, teachable moment here. Heed my warning. Please, 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 brothers and sisters, heed my warning. See, this is the whole thing. This is the whole thing. Please listen. This is not Cat's warning. Now, don't get me wrong. We're to go out and preach the gospel. Sermons on hell, I think, are fantastic. The fear of God is the beginning of wisdom. We should fear God and what's coming. We should work out our salvation daily with fear and trembling. I added daily. But what she's trying to do is make it hers. A very specific warning of the rapture happening this weekend. Heed my warning. And that's just, again, the sign of a very arrogant, narcissistic person who, uh, you know, as far as I can see, is proclaiming herself as the single greatest prophet in the last 2,000 years, being so powerful and having such a powerful YouTube channel that it has literally disrupted the plans, the evil plans of Dr. Evil himself, Satan. Again, wow. All right, so we're going to wrap up the clips here with uh, the final thing that she says. And uh, you'll have to excuse the pounding. There's some construction going on. But listen to what she says here. Okay. If you still don't have the answer, begin your own search. You are not to rely on a human being to teach you. You were supposed to be learning this stuff. You were supposed to be in the Word, not listening to humans teach you. You were supposed to be in the Word to learn this. You were supposed to be going out in the Internet, learning more about this, till you knew who your... Okay, you heard that. Going out on the Internet to learn about God. You guys, what more can I say? This is a, an absolute novice. Either she is ridiculously dumb, or she is... Uh, intentionally deceiving the lambs of Christ. And so I'm going to leave you with some scripture. Let's wrap this up in 2 Timothy 3, verse 6. For of this sort are they which creep into houses and lead captive silly women laden with sins, led away with divers lusts, ever learning and never able to come to the knowledge of the truth. So I need you guys to listen to this. There is a way and that way is through Jesus Christ. John 14, 6, where Jesus says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. The middle one that he says is the truth. Important enough for him to mention in this ever so popular and powerful scripture. The truth is so important. So what you've got here is a very arrogant, narcissistic woman who loves to control people. And she wants to control you. It doesn't matter if she doesn't accept money. There are other avenues that people get off on the praises of other men and women. And this is clearly one of those cases. But I wonder, as much as she says that God talks to her, and as much as she says that she loves Jesus, let's see on the fourth how fast she can get on here and repent of this folly. My guess is she won't. And this is only going to show. This is See, this is the meat and potatoes to find out if they actually do love God. Or if, in fact, they serve their own belly. And this will prove immediately uh, what kind of person she is. So until next time, God bless you all. We'll talk to you soon. It actually serves as a good lesson. We actually can learn a lot from Cat T. For she is actually fulfilling end times prophecy by being this wayward, self-proclaimed teacher who is really just an absolute child novice wave being tossed in the sea. But the sad thing is, is that she keeps on persisting, refusing to repent in a proper way. She babbles and babbles, and therefore you get what you get. We're going to listen to her latest video of unrepentance and vain talking, and we can learn from it. We can learn to be sound. My message in this video is Cat T is a false prophet, proven you cannot gain 
much more proof than what this woman did. So my message is, don't be like Cat T. Now, of course, Cat T went back and removed uh, some of her previous videos where she falsely prophesied. And she had guaranteed that she was 1,000% sure that it was going to happen with all different sorts of proclamations on how God has proclaimed her as the key. And we don't, uh, we don't want to waste this opportunity to learn. And so we're going to look and listen to what Kat says here because uh, we learn that this woman is absolutely bonkers, or as my friend Laura would say, absolutely crackers. And you're going to hear this delusion being furthered right here. Give it a listen. Turns out, I don't know if you remember when I told you I was in the Bible Code, not once, but twice. Uh, my name is in the Bible Code. And this channel is in the Bible Code. Of course, because there's the Bible Code. And Cat is in the Bible Code, and so is her channel. Which is kind of weird because her name's Cat and her channel is Cat. So, but I don't know. This is delusion. This is a massive delusion. And just in case you didn't hear me, this is delusion. So, um, uh, the good thing is you can take this because she's doing everything that I told you she would do. She's uh, staying true to the exact format of what a false prophet does. She does not repent. Uh, she continues to teach as though she had any authority at all, which she does not. She is a child, uh, a delusional child. And unfortunately, in this day and age, people just tuning in are going to be fooled, even continuing on from here, because she speaks with authority, or at least with me she doesn't, but um, with others who are vulnerable and not well versed in scripture she's going to come off as sounding authority uh, authoritative and thus she's going to dupe many more into her satanic lies so we listen to this next clip and again this is where a false prophet does not repent but continues her folly just like harold camping did when he missed uh, his eighth rapture date he came back and recalculated and set another date and this is what uh, Queen Dingy here is doing. So listen to what she says. Um, as I told you, I cannot apologize for the Feast of Trumpets because it will come on the Feast of Trumpets. Are you sure? I'm 100% sure. You're 100% 100 sure. 100% sure. He showed me. 100% sure. So every time a wolf comes on and says, I'm 100% sure, I'm 100% sure, and it doesn't happen, and then they come back and they make another video and says, okay. I made a mistake, but this time I'm 100% sure. I'm 100% sure. I mean, how long people, for those of you who may be tuning in who are new, how many chances, according to God's holy word, how many chances do we give a prophet to be wrong? Well, if you read Deuteronomy, the answer is none. Or I guess you could say one. Because the first time that they're wrong, that's it. In the Old Testament, they would have been taken out of the city and killed. And uh, we're going to actually get into a very interesting clip coming up here about that. But here, uh, according to Kat and many of her brainwashed followers, oh, it's okay. It's okay. We'll get them next time, Tiger. And uh, that's just wrong. God never misses. So let's continue on. So in this next clip, we're going to get into the psychology of what Kat is at least trying to do. So listen to this. Sure. 100% sure he showed me that. It is on Feast of... Okay, did you hear what she said there? He showed me that. Now, unfortunately, she erased or deleted her other videos. How many times does this woman say, he showed me it? He showed me it. I'm the key. He told me that I'm the key. He showed me. Well, I have no doubt that somebody's showing her something, but I can assure you that it's not God. Why? Because she was wrong. She falsely prophesied. And now we're supposed to expect that God let that happen for a reason? That God allowed his holy name to be smeared for a greater purpose? Does this ever happen? 
And the answer is no, it doesn't. God is perfect. God is holy. Magnificent beyond all imagination. But here she wants to deceive those that somehow God allowed this to happen for his greater glory. And again, he showed her something. He showed me. Gotta believe me this time, guys. He showed me. Well, whoever he is is not God. So we're going to listen to this next clip and just listen to how she absolutely is all over the place with her vain babbling. Nonsensical. I have to absolutely believe that this woman is on drugs. I really do. She, She's the most nonsensical all over the place. Um, contradictions within contradictions in whatever she's trying to do. I know she calls it teaching, but make no mistake, this woman is not a teacher. It is on Feast of the Trumpets. Like I said, the problem with it is it can fall on his calendar, which is the lunar calendar, or it could fall on the Jewish harvest calendar. And because this year, when the harvest, what? they didn't think it... the harvest was a bee, oh. they threw a leap year in. Oh, a leap year. I still say it's wrong. You still say you still say it's wrong. Is that just a feeling you have, Cat? But who knows? I can't answer that. I do not know for a fact. The bottom line is she just said, "I do not know for a fact." <laughs> just, oh my goodness, jumbling jablaya. I mean, this is all over the place. By the time somebody gets done listening to this, they have actually been made dumber in life for having listened to what this woman has to say. Absolutely nonsensical gibberish. So let's continue. The bottom line is I had to make a call. And then because of what happened, I thought I was right. So again, it's not a lie. It's not? I was deceived too. Oh, Remember? you were deceived too. And you know, that's okay because that's common practice with true prophets of God. You know, sometimes they get to, no, wait, they don't. They don't get deceived at all. It's never happened. Somebody please show me where it's happened. True prophets of God are not deceived. Sorry, Kat. All right, so listen to what she says here. And it was wonderful, and I'm ready to go. And the next day I said, okay, we go. It didn't devastate me, and it didn't devastate a lot of people. Well, you see, that's the uh, furthering delusion of what she says. You know, I have to thank God that Kat does not have more subscribers than she does. Because nobody nobody doubts, and this is the dangerous part, when somebody is perceived to have authority like Kat, and she comes on with her false teachings, I can't imagine the people that would have been more devastated and would have just walked away from Christianity, from Jesus, based on what uh, the queen here says or what she said they would have walked away and this is the damage this is the damage that false prophets do in fact many people were thankful that somebody gave them a clue that it could be any other day besides see so, you now this is the psychology you know you guys it wasn't that bad you know in fact it actually turned out to be pretty good everybody grew closer to god and there was nothing wrong with it. So actually what I did was really, really good. And uh, you guys don't need to look at me as a false prophet or a babbling, vain, moronic teacher. Uh, it actually was for the benefit. So that's probably why God did this all. It wasn't me, guys. It wasn't me. It was, uh, it was God. And everything turned out great. So don't look over here. Let's move on. Let's continue. Listen to this. This is, uh, I'd call this the crown jewel of the video. So, as I tell you, I don't know what to tell you. So, as I tell you, I don't know what to tell you. Well, I think true believers can't kind of figure that out. You don't know what to tell them. You're just on YouTube to gain the praises of men, to serve your own belly, and that's all you are. Again, and it's good that we um, reprove this uh, woman because listen to how she just absolutely twists scripture to bring sympathy upon herself as though she's being persecuted for her faith in Jesus Christ. Listen to what this, oh my goodness, what she says here. In Luke, verse, I mean, uh, Luke 6, verse 22, again, this is Jesus say, talking. 
Blessed are you when people hate you, when they exclude you, insult you, and reject your name as evil because of the Son of Man. Rejoice in that day and leap for joy, because great is your reward in heaven, for that is how their ancestors treated the prophets. No, that's not... That's not, Kat, and none of that applies to you, for you are not being persecuted for your faith in Jesus Christ. You are being reproved for your false prophecy. And furthering, again, we know this scripture that is in Deuteronomy 18, where if you had done this in previous times, you would have been killed. That's the offense that you have committed. You are not being persecuted for being a Christian. If you want to look at it as persecution, that's fine. You're being persecuted for being a liar and using the name of God to try to further your own agenda. Let's just all agree on that. Kat is not being persecuted for being a Christian, but here she does. She tries to do what every ridiculous and laughable false prophet does. They try to apply these scriptures to themselves as though now she's some sort of a victim, and she's not. She's Queen Dingy. Now here we're going to listen to a clip of her telling the, um, reading the parable that's in the Bible about um, the tares growing with the weeds. I'm sorry, with the uh, weeds growing with the wheat. And listen to the arrogance here. Till the harvest. At that time, I will tell the harvesters that would be me. See how she self-testifies that she's a harvester? You know, and why did you feel the need to do that? How does one do that after so blatantly false prophesying. It is astonishing the arrogance, the pompousness of this woman to call herself a harvester. <laughs> I'm trying to think of something to say. It's just, your jaws just drop. It's absolutely astonishing what a dingbat this woman is. Let's listen on. First, collect the weeds and tie them into bundles to be burned, then gather the wheat and bring into my barn. I told you the very first thing that he would do is judge the church. That's what we are doing. We are now in harvest time. I have repented. No, you I haven't. You will. Because I will tell you, you just stoned a woman. You and, just, okay, you just stoned a woman. Okay, I heard that. Continue. Stoned a sister. In 2016, you crucified a sister in 2016 in the end days in front of your father. And I think that we, if we actually did what she says we've done, then we've actually obeyed scripture. Because again, we know in Deuteronomy 18, it says to uh, put to death somebody who falsely prophesies. But somehow this novice finds it fascinating that she took such a beating. That's delusion. Somebody who's so delusional that they can't get past what I, you know, in her mind, I falsely prophesied and they're mad? They want to kill me? They want to obey the scriptures and do what God commands men to do when somebody falsely prophesies? But here again, see how she's turning it around. And she's going to get away with it with many of her followers because they don't know the Bible. They don't know scripture. So this is enough. I want to send a plea out to those who follow this absolute novice dingbat. I want to raise the question, why? Why would anybody listen to another word that this woman has to say? Why? To do this, you have to intentionally disfollow the truth of Jesus Christ. For he tells us, he warns us several times throughout the New Testament on what it's going to be like in the end days, including silly doctrines, doctrines of devils, people coming forth claiming to have divinity, which we know she did in the last video when she claimed that people have actually blasphemed against her. Why would anybody continue to listen to her? It is so ridiculous. So I would plea to those of you listening to me to get back on the path to the truth of Jesus Christ, to be sober-minded, to pay no heed to babbling, silly, 
false teachers and false prophets who do nothing but testify of themselves and then make up excuses when their ridiculous and obvious prophecies don't come to pass. Please follow Jesus Christ. This woman is not to be feared. She is mentally ill or on drugs. And she is, she, you know, she did say one thing that was true, that she is in the Bible, but it's not where she says. She's in the Bible in 2 Timothy 4.3, when it talks about, they will no longer give heed to sound doctrine, but heap up to themselves, heap unto themselves, teachers having itching ears. Please recognize this, everybody listening to me. For I don't point to myself, I don't point to any other man, I point to Jesus Christ. And I ask you to follow his commandments, to love him, and to know what people like Cat T are doing. God bless you all. Leave your questions, comments, and uh, have a great day. There's two different ways to handle false prophets. In Deuteronomy chapter 18, if we start in verse 20, but the prophet which shall presume to speak a word in my name, which I have not commanded him to speak, or that shall speak the name of other gods, even that prophet shall die. Now we can't do this anymore. So I'm going to say, pay attention to verse 22 here. When a prophet speaketh in the name of the Lord, if the thing follow not, nor come to pass, that is a thing which the Lord hath not spoken. Boy, you can't get any clearer than that. But the prophet that hath spoken presumptuously, thou shalt not be afraid of him. Right here. Now, we know Cat T has falsely prophesied the rapture. So we know, number one, that the Lord, that that's a thing which the Lord hath not spoken. So we know that Cat T is a liar. A big, fat liar. The second part of this is, please, people who follow her, don't be afraid of her. Um, no amount of words that she spews from this moment forward shall not be feared. So with that, let's get started. So I was going to wait till tomorrow to do this video, but Kat came out and guess what? She has brought forth an explanation video. Let me, let me explain to you what really happened, guys. <laughs> okay. Which is just embarrassing. Because I think if you heard me on the first two videos, I was really hoping that she would kind of unify the body of Christ and come forth with a repentance video. But typical of every false prophet uh, that's filled with pride, she's, you know, buckling down and she's going to cling to her pride and give explanations. And now it's not happening yesterday or today, but it's going to be really soon. And that's what I was trying to say all along. But she did something that I absolutely told you that she was going to do, and maybe not to me specifically, um, but she calls down death in this video. So let's listen to the first clip. I'm going to start with something you need to hear yet again, and this time you better listen because I'm... Now, here's what's absolutely funny about this. Number one, if you notice the way throughout this video that she speaks, she speaks very crisp and enunciate her words, enunciates her words with authority. And you better listen. Because if you didn't hear it before, you better hear it now. As though speaking like this somehow is going to add actual authority or even truth. It's ridiculous. Her way of speaking is folly. And that's some psychology for anybody listening because she's an absolute false prophet. Not just a false teacher, but a false prophet. For she falsely prophesied return of Christ. And it did not happen. And we know what the scripture is. We read it at the beginning. 
So now she's going to enunciate her authoritative words, because maybe that will make it true, right? I'm telling you right now, many of you already gave up your, not only a rapture, but you gave up your redemption. This is in Mark There's the death. 3, 28. Truly, I say to you, all sins will be forgiven. Here the comes the blasphemy men, part. Whatever blasphemies they utter. But whoever blasphemes against the Holy Spirit, never. Can you spell that? That is N-E-V-E-R, has forgiveness. So now she's equating to coming against her as blasphemy of the Holy Spirit. And this is typical. Every, I guess if you could term it this way, every quality false prophet always uh, insinuates this, that, well, you came against them, so you've committed the unforgivable sin. And like a child, has no real knowledge or information about what that verse truly means. Uh, she's a child, an absolute child. All right, just another uh, clip here of delusion. Right now she's telling the story of a lady who is apparently challenging her this morning via email. And listen to what she says here. She was blaspheming the Spirit. And right as I'm reading that, I had an earthquake. I had an earthquake that we don't have. We don't have. So everybody knows that there was an earthquake this morning. And, uh, but Kat here is attributing this to, I don't know, maybe the anger of God because this woman was challenging Kat. I mean, this is what she's insinuating. This is how delusional this lady is. Absolute delusion. I mean, can you imagine that? If this is true, what Kat's saying, then here's, here's exactly what happened. God allowed Kat to falsely prophesy the rapture, still having Kat at his side, so to speak, still having her back, and so much so that when this lady began to challenge Cat, God's anger thundered from heaven and caused an earthquake to let this lady know not to challenge Cat. I mean, this is what is in the mind of this delusional lady. It's, again, absurd. And I got news for you. Many of you not only are not going on the rapture, but you're not saved. You're done. So okay. Now here's why her teaching is so dangerous. This woman is falsely prophesying, and she does not repent. But instead, she hunkers down, and she starts telling everybody that they're not saved. Now, this is going out to the vulnerable, the weak-minded, the gullible, those who are babes in Christ. And she just continues with this folly. She's actually scorning and chastising those who have come against her. Not for the persecution of being a Christian, mind you, but for falsely prophesying. This is astonishing. This is the delusion that we have here in the last day. The last days, so to speak. I'm, I'm just speechless. She's actually, I mean, this has shades of Vonda Brewer. How dare you question me? Yeah, but you false, falsely prophesied. <gasps> You've blasphemed the Holy Spirit. And you know what? I'm not even sure. I, I'm going to go ahead and say that you're not even safe. But wait a second. You're the one who falsely prophesied. See, see the uh, psychology, the, the illogical premise that she's focusing her whole argument on. It's just ridiculous. So let's listen to this next clip. This is so obnoxiously rude. So again, I caution every Christian out there. Keep your mouth shut. You do not know what you are doing. Wait. See this again. This is the logic. She's telling everybody to shut up. You don't know what you're doing. When this woman just falsely prophesied. I mean, let that sink in. Now, the reason that I go over this and I get very specific here is because there are those who follow this woman as though she has an inkling of authority. It is astonishing. And, and here's the delusion right here. When I did my video on Kat, I don't know what, a week and a half ago, two weeks ago, she had 800. She's added almost 1,000 in less than two weeks. Because people want to hear the fantastic, the supernatural. They want the rapture date. 
But I'm telling you right now, Christians, babes in Christ, all those who will listen to me, we don't know the day and the hour. The people that are coming against Kat, again, it's not because she's a Christian. It's because she's a fake Christian. She has defied the words of Jesus Christ and called him a liar. When Jesus said, no man knoweth the day and the hour, Kat said, I do. Therefore, making Jesus Christ a liar. As a believer, a follower of Jesus Christ for 35 years, I'm telling you that this lady is a nutbag and not to be feared. She is either on heavy medication. Now we know she was a nurse. She probably still has her connections in getting drugs. She's got to be. Or she is absolutely stark raving out of her mind and actually possessed with some sort of evil spirit who is tinkering and toying with her like a dancing marinette. Absolutely bonkers. All right, so we're going to listen to this next clip. And again, this is um, quite telling. So let's listen to what this slack jaw says. The master is coming, and you're beating his servants. Mm. And he, you better know what he says he will do to you for beating his servants. See, again, another form of her calling down death. Um, here's the thing, Kat. If you were a servant, a true servant of God, you would not have missed a prophecy. Nothing more. So your threat going out against those who speak against you is unfounded. It's laughable. It's ridiculous. You're not a servant of God. You're a servant of Satan because you falsely prophesied and quite frankly, deserving of death according to the word of God. We read in Deuteronomy 18.20 what they did. So serious is the crime that you committed that God said it was worthy of death. But there's no repentance in you. It's absolutely pathetic. So we're going to listen to the next clip here. And this is really what makes her a very extremely false and dangerous teacher. Listen to what she says. And keep in mind there are babes and Christian, new Christians listening. Listen to what she says. You're done. This is it. You're done. There's no other time for you to make up or to repent or to pray. And some of this is just downright unforgivable by him. Okay, that's false. The first point she made is that you're done. There's no more time, which is false. If you have air in your lungs, there is time. Now, I'm not insinuating that we should wait to give our hearts and our lives to Jesus Christ, but she's called it. She's called it all that there is no more time. And again, this is just a defense on her part because she's wickedly falsely prophesied the rapture, which didn't happen. And then she goes on again to confirm that this is all unforgivable. And again, this is she's taking it very personal, as she should, uh, because she's a witch. Absolute wicked witch saying that the uh, unforgivable sins, unforgivable sin has been committed. And this is just so wrong. If you are a babe in Christ, if you are a new Christian, um, you call out to Jesus Christ. Cat T is about as false as they come, laughably so. She's absolutely false. And I, I say it over and over and over again, a, a total novice, a total novice who is just flipped out in her mind. Absolutely psychotic. Here's the thing, folks. Satan's using you. Oh. Satan is using you. I, I didn't even see that coming. I get it. Okay, let me see if I get this straight. You falsely prophesy the rapture, and Satan is using me. Oh, I get it. I'm such a dummy. Thanks, Cat. Your wisdom transcends the universe. What your opponent does, and because of that, and you're not girded. Most of you are not girded. Most of you are not girded. Do you listen to the way she talks to you with such authority? Am I exaggerating? Of course, it's ridiculous. Again, simply thinking that she can speak like this. You know, here's the sad thing, too. There are people that are still going to fear her because she speaks like this. It's terrible. It's just terrible. 
Listen to this child. So all of you who come in and blaspheme me and say repent for giving... <laughs> blaspheme me. It's amazing. Have you ever heard a more pompous... Boy, words escape me. Just the arrogance, the pomp, the, the narcissism involved here is setting records. This is record setting. Blaspheming cat. I have never, I don't even, I, I gotta tell you, I honestly think at this point she has overtaken Claire from a still small voice. At least in the category of narcissism and pomp, arrogance, conceitedness, Astonishing. His triumphant ride into the... Now, here she's talking about Daniel's prophecy of Jesus, which she's way off on, by the way. But listen to how she kills herself in her own words. City. He also predicted to the day when Christ would be crucified and to the day when the city would be destroyed. That's called setting dates. That's what the Bible does, my friends. That That's what the Bible does, my friends. Oh, my goodness. Here, Cat, let me teach you again, but I know you won't listen. Daniel, a Jewish prophet, hand-selected by God and dearly beloved by God, never missed a prophecy. How do you explain your comparison to Daniel, you absurd egomaniac, delusional, wretched, filthy, intentional witch, by choice, mind you, to compare yourself to Daniel? But I guess you're even more important because you disrupted 2,000 years of Satan's plans. The most powerful prophet that ever lived. Boy, the delusion is just accelerating in these last times. I'm not going to play anything more. This woman is amongst the most, most dangerous. In the short clips that we've heard, she said that if you come against her, that number one, Satan is using you, even though she's the one that has falsely prophesied. She has also equated herself to Daniel the prophet, she has also said that if you come against her, you've blasphemed the Holy Spirit. And she's also said that you blasphemed her, which you know that blaspheme can only occur unto somebody who is divine, unto God. So, boy, oh boy, did we learn a lot. You're going to see this woman fall and fall hard. Because though we can't do what Deuteronomy 1820 says, which is drag her out of the city and stone her, we can certainly learn that this woman is not only not to be feared, she's a clown, absolute clown, blaspheming the holy words of Jesus and teaching her flock not to be sober-minded. It is incredible, absolutely incredible and sad. It's just unbelievable. I was so praying that this woman would repent. And I, I kind of figured that she would do what she's doing. I just didn't know that she would do it in such a mean-spirited way. But I'm telling you right now again, and I'll just reiterate this, babes in Christ, new Christians, do not fear this Jezebel. She does not know God. She's on the other side of the universe from God. And it's by choice. Is she unforgivable? No. Am I calling down death upon her? No. Am I laughing at her? Yes, a little bit. But then that laughter turns to sorrow when I think of the people that follow her and believe her. It's just absurd, but I will laugh at her teachings. She's an absolute novice who has no understanding of the Bible. And that's really all I can say about that. So we wrap up with this. What do you see here? Here's a cat that is trapped. Now, you could look at the paper here as 
being representative of her words because they're not words of scripture. Sure, she uses scripture to try to justify, but the best part about false prophets is that you can know them very easily when their prophecy does not come to pass. And if that ever happens, not just with Cat, but with anybody, people, you can surely know that they do not speak for God. Because God, in his infinite power, in his glory, in his, his very being, never, ever, ever misses. Do not fear Cat. I'm going to leave her in the taillights because she's doing this all by choice. And there's always room for repentance, and I pray that she would. But right now, she's just a dingling who thinks that speaking like this somehow makes what she's saying true, and it just doesn't. It's just another psychological trick that is backfiring on her. Pathetic. But Kat, if you're listening, I pray that you would repent. There is a real Jesus Christ who has trying, is trying to teach you to be sober-minded and just love Jesus Christ with all your heart, all your soul, and all your mind. You're trying to be somebody that you're not, and that's your downfall. Read your Bible and learn, Cat. Learn to be silent. <laughs>
Oh my goodness. One eight nineteen sixty nine two of twenty sixteen. That is your rapture date. All right. Did you hear that? She came to the rapture date off of her birthday. And of course, what she did here is even more fascinating because you know the procedure to come to the correct number, you have to add your age. 5 plus 6 equals 11. And 11, yeah, you'd usually think that was a number in itself, but it's not. So she separates it and adds 1 plus 1 equals 2. And this is how she inserts that between the 9 and the 16 because, you know, you're supposed to do that. Right? That's how the Bible teaches us to do that. And thus, our Lord hath revealed the dateth of the raptureth to Cat T. Now, you might be thinking, this lady is nuts. And if you are thinking that, you're correct. But wait, it gets better. It is throughout the entire Bible. This was not a mistake. Of course not, Cat. My name has nine letters. My middle name has nine letters. Amazing. My last name has six letters. Okay, did you hear that now? <laughs> She's doing the numerology with her name because not only was her birth date all throughout the Bible, but also her name. She's confirming this, so I want to back this up a little bit. The funniest thing that I will tell you right here is what most conspiracy theorists would come and they would look at this and say, 996. Well, everyone knows that if you turn the nines upside down, they become sixes. Six, six, six. I mean, somebody could do that to Cat, but I think people who really love God find this absolutely laughable. It's absolute folly. And again, she testifies of her birth date, her name. It's all confirmed, but just wait, it gets worse. My name has nine letters. My middle name has nine letters. My last name has six letters. You can take it as, you can do a six, but it, what it is is it's divided by two, and it turns out just to be a two. Or you can use what? my my nickname, Cat, <clears throat> which is three letters, because Feast of Trumpets, depending on where you're located in the world, will take place either on the second or the third. Okay, brilliant. See how confident she is of herself? And that, ladies and gentlemen, is the mic drop, right? I mean, give me a break. She just equated her nickname to a confirmation, the Feast of Trumpets, because the Feast of the Trumpets is two or three days long. And thank God, I, I guess, thank God, some point in her life, somebody nicknamed her Cat, so that we could equate the three letters of cat to the number three and thus confirming a Feast of Trumpets rapture. Ring-a-ding-ling, ding-ring-dong. That's a ding-dong. I am very happy to tell you guys that. Not trying to be mean. If it sounds mean, well, if it fits, what she's teaching is folly. This is a ding-bat teacher. Let's listen a little bit more. Also... Eight is completion, and seven, seven. is history. What? Oh, gosh. She just pointed at 1960 and said seven. I showed this to you before. I only got a part of it. <laughs> and I was only supposed to get a part of it because I kept saying, if you would have showed me this sooner, everything has been done with perfection and perfect, perfect timing. Everything I have done, I didn't know it, but he did. Hmm, of course. My channel address of my very first video on the rapture is... Oh, my gosh. ...right there. This is a computer random generated code. It is not present in any other video I've done. Um, it... it the, only this video, after he gave me that Jeremiah, there's the video. Wow, what a it confirmation. It channel by God with cat, nine, Zechariah. Now. Why, how do you know? What if it was chastised by God? 
Where did you get channel? How do you, I mean, see how dumb this is? She's making anything she wants to fit to, within that to fit. This is ridiculous. This is a child. I had kind of touched on this and went, oh, cool. Now it makes sense. Zachariah 9, 9, September. Rejoice. And, no, and not September. Chapter 9, verse 9. <laughs> Jeez. It's a big thing. He said, leave these two off. It says, rejoice greatly, daughter of Zion. It's supposed to say to me, what? What's rejoice it? greatly, daughter. Okay. See your king she, comes to you righteous and victorious. She just burped. Lonely and riding on a donkey, on a colt. The full, the what? foot of a donkey. What? The foot the, of a donkey? Oh, I can't even read my own writing. Well, yet. how about that? There you go. So we're looking at Kat. She's, uh, she's almost a female version of Jonathan Kleck. Um, she's into the numerology, I suppose. Give her a year and she'll be turning uh, pictures of the Vatican chair upside down and saying, it's a woman's private parts. Jeez. Okay, aside from the false uh, rapture date setting that this woman has just done, based on her birthday and her name, and then proclaiming that God gave it to her, and it's all through Scripture, she also did a part two, and we're looking at actually part three, and we're going to measure this girl uh, by other things that she says, just to be sure. So let's give this a little, uh, a little listen on part three here. I told you a long time ago when he wanted that video made about cautioning you to go to on YouTube. I tell you whether you believe this or not. He is trying to protect you. Where? On this channel. Oh, okay, on this channel. Does that sound familiar to any of you that may have seen some of my other videos? Testifying of, her, of herself. Uh, and of course, God coming through and testifying of her channel. I, I don't know what to add to this. It's, I think we've seen this uh, dog and pony show so many times. It, it just gets sickening. But I want to get this out here because there are people that actually follow this lady and, and are listening to anything she says. You know, And like any other fake prophet, fake teacher, half of what she says is true, but it's the other half that is folly. Folly and silly. He is giving you an avenue to hear some truths. Where? In fact, I laugh because one thing he keeps showing me is, like, like I'm a stewardess. Of and course. Like this, these things that I give you, you call them teachings. I just call them whatever. Oh, of course, because you're so humble, cat. Believe me, any person that knows their scripture does not call what you do teachings. Anybody who truly knows Jesus Christ can already surmise that what you do is witchcraft. Witchcraft. It's as simple as that. It's a form of it. And then you use God as a footnote to try to pass on your folly. It's silly. I certainly would never call you a teacher from what I've seen just in two videos. It's it's clear what you're up to. You you defied scripture and you've lied about God. So let's listen to this next clip which is completely blasphemous. Just like when you make a flight reservation you are given a date any time. If you don't make your flight, if you don't show up on that date and that time you're not flying out. So she compares the return of Christ to booking a flight with Pan Am. And again Silliness. And people have to wonder why I get so angry. It's the absolute silliness. And I know I say that word a lot, but what other, what, what can you say about people that do this over and over again and then teach this to other people? Unbelievable. So let's confirm a little bit more. He has confirmed the date biblically over and over again and you i got news for you because i didn't give you all of them who did uh, i am you're the what i am the key of I course you are you now now you can go find more my goodness There's tons. and i'm sure i mutilated some of those because i will tell you he was spitting them out i i was like oh my gosh oh. Of course, she's telling the story of the one god came and met with her and and just started 
uh, I guess this would be a prophecy dump upon her, right? Over and over, and she was freaking out because, you know, she's the chosen vessel, right? Uh, amazing. Thank you, Kat. Now, if there's still any question that this lady is a novice, um, you know, you've got to be careful when you're a teacher what you say. But listen to what she says here. And just as Daniel was able to predict, predict exactly when Christ rode in on that donkey, when their predictions were to the day on everything in prophecy. Well, they weren't predictions. They were prophet prophecy. Nobody makes predictions. Uh, at least no men or women of God make predictions. They make prophecy as spoken to them by the Holy Spirit. These are not predictions. And another thing that Daniel didn't do, he didn't spell out his first, middle, and last name and write down his birthday and come to the date that Jesus would ride into Jerusalem on the uh, colt. So, again, uh, nothing to do with that at all. Dingling. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to play a clip and I'm going to break down why what Cat T, what she's doing and why it's wrong. So let's listen first and then I'll explain it to you. You put your full heart into this. You, two days you could be on the rapture. I'm dead serious. I tell you, this is the most important decision you probably have ever made in your entire life. If you have not chosen the right team. Because this is the winning team. I have news for you. Okay. What she's done is she's gone through a, a small explanation as to why you should come to Jesus Christ so that you can get on the rapture on August 2nd or 3rd or whatever she, I'm sorry, September 2nd or 3rd, whatever she's saying. So what she's doing is she's fear goading people into coming to Jesus, which in specific terms sometimes can be a good thing. But for what she's doing, She's scaring people into falling on their knees and coming to Christ. Here's what's going to happen. They're going to do it. But in my best discernment, they're doing it for the wrong reasons. Because what's going to happen, <clears throat> excuse me, is when September 2nd and 3rd roll around and the rapture doesn't happen, as we all know that it will not, what are those people that came to Jesus during this time period going to do? They're going to get mad, and they're going to become even more separated from God than they previously were. This is why her whole teaching, her dingbat teaching, is bad. People are going to leave Christ because of what this woman is doing, because of her false teaching. She's bringing people to Jesus for the wrong purpose saying, you've got two weeks, Jesus is going to come. People may actually repent and come to the, come to the Lord for that time. But when the second and the third passes, they're going to realize, and rightly so, that this woman is on some kind of drugs, or that she clearly is the reprobate that I say she is, in falsely teaching and falsely interpreting, interpreting the scripture. She has no business teaching. And they're going to leave Christ. They're going to harden their hearts because instead of simply preaching the gospel, she has falsely set a date. And she's using a corrupt system to bring people to Christ. And therefore, it will not last. Rather than the words of Christ, rather than preaching the gospel, she is going about it in the completely wrong way. All right, so let's wrap up this latest video, uh, this exposure, because rightly so, she's being exposed as an absolute reprobate. Let's see what she says now. Better buckle up. Get going. Two weeks. Two weeks. Two weeks, we're out of here. And that's a fact. That's a fact. And that's a fact. So let's make a deal, Cat T. You feel so strongly about what you're saying. After the 2nd and 3rd of September passes, what will you do? Now, I know what you won't do. You're not going to repent. 
you're not going to take your channel down. You're not going to come out and say, I was wrong. What you're going to do is you're going to rework your numbers, just like all the other dumb, fake date setters do. And you're going to say, I was off my birth date. I forgot I was born in 59, so I was off a year. And when you add the 9 and the 5 and carry the 1, and see, that's what you're going to do. This is what makes you so dangerous. Because though you have some 800 followers, probably 200 of those followers worship you. And they hang on your every word. And that's unfortunate. They're not going to learn what the Bible says about false prophets in Leviticus. That in the old days you would have been dragged out of the city and stoned to death. But not today. Today you get YouTube, which allows you to make unlimited mistakes and get away with it. And you won't repent. And this will prove that you don't truly love God. Because you are unteachable, unscriptural, and unrepentant. And that's really too bad. You're filled with pride. You can't be taught. And this is why, this is why people like me come out and make these videos. Because you're doing what a million other people in the last 2,000 years have done. They've set a date. And they say it with such conviction and passion. You better buckle up. You better buckle up. Here it comes, two weeks. Don't be left behind. That's what you're doing. And we've heard it a million times before. So if there are any out there who are maybe curious about Jesus Christ and who he is, he does love you. The right way to do it is through the love of Jesus Christ. And let me show you. Go ahead and read this with me. Jesus saith unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. If you love Jesus Christ, know this, that he is the way, the truth, and the life. And you cannot come unto the Father but through him. Today, if you're hearing this, and you want Jesus Christ, you must commit to come to him through the truth, the truth of the gospel. Now, knowing that Jesus himself told us that no man knoweth the date of the hour, and there's no way around this. Truly, no man does. There have been many dingbats who have proclaimed to know, but they've all obviously been proven wrong. But if you want to know Jesus Christ, it starts with a prayer to confess your sins, to repent of your sins, and to come to him. Come to him humbly and say, Jesus, you are the Lord, and I will follow you the rest of my life on earth so that I can have the rest of eternity with you and the glory of your Father. And you can also continue, Jesus, I don't know when you're coming back, but I pray that I'm ready for you. I pray that when you return, you find me doing the Father's work, ready for you, because I don't know when you're coming back. But I'm going to live for you, so I don't need to be afraid of missing the rapture. I'm not going to listen to false teachers who want to always date set. So I give my life to you, Jesus. And though it's not easy, and though it will be a struggle, I will commit to live for you, so that I can have eternity with you. And I will listen to you, and I will read your scripture, and I will obey your commandments, and I will love you with all of my heart, all of my mind, and all of my soul. Please save me, and you will be saved. I pray that you said that prayer. So I've said all I need to say about her. Um, if you want to continue on from here, it's just going to be a couple of more minutes. Um, just to kind of further confirm uh, where her motives are. Um, other than that, if you have questions and comments, leave them. But listen to what she says here. Um, there are a lot of Christians out there on YouTube. And there's a lot of fighting on YouTube. And there's a lot of Christians digging and being nasty. In many cases, Christians are perceived as being nasty because of people like this. Because of people like this. What she's doing is absolutely unscriptural. 
And so there are true Christians who actually care about the body of Christ and what they're hearing from wolves like this. But let's continue to listen. Um, or the other thing I love is the stealing. You can, t I can literally watch from when something comes out and when it comes out through other Christians, but they don't give the credit to the other Christian. That's See, what she's doing here is she's complaining. Why? Because she wants glory. And she's talking clearly about herself, that I guess she's saying other Christians are stealing her prophecies. Would any person who is truly hearing from God actually care about this? Or even call it stealing? No. The word needs to get out. If I had some great revelation and I did a video on it and other people took it and went with it, what do I care? People are getting saved if it's in truth. But if it's not in truth, I guess what you do is you call it stealing. Stealing. Do you understand that? It didn't come from God. It came from another Christian who got it from God. That's stealing. No, it isn't. If it came from God then it's, it spreads through the pipeline. This is so ridiculous. That's as though, that's as though uh, Peter, who wrote his epistles, his letters, somehow got mad because somebody else was teaching out of it. That, that's mine. God gave that to me. You're just stealing it. It's ridiculous. Absolute novice. So we're going to end on that. Again, uh, I do this because this is a wolf. She's, she is nuts absolutely nuts. There's no nice way to say it. And again, people will say, hey, you're a gossiper and a divider. No, I'm not. I actually care about what the lambs of Christ are being taught. And I see dingbats like this on YouTube who are teaching an absolute unscriptural doctrine. She is not doing what 2 John 1, 9 tells us to do, and that's abide in the doctrine of Christ. Every single right to call her out publicly. We read it in the beginning. This is why I put it right at the beginning. Leave your questions and comments. God bless you all who love Christ, and we will talk to you soon.